Well, when L.A. Law went down, uh, uh, there I was trying to book a directing career, basically. And you just have to remember there weren't any women. There were hardly any. So I was, at that point, a pretty hot commodity because I came off this giant show and I had a lot of episodes. It, it, it's a real problem for a lot of people. And I say women because that's what I know the best. But so often they get an opportunity to direct on a show that they've been working on. They get two or three episodes under the belt and the show goes down. Um, uh, and men can, or in the, I mean, we're in a whole new thing now, right? But men could parlay two or three episodes maybe into a directing career. Women absolutely could not. So um, there was a period of time that just broke my heart uh, 10 years ago maybe where I kept running into women who had been script supervisors and or assistant directors, that's the normal, um, who had this experience. They finally got their dream, they got their three episodes, they thought they were off and running, and the bottom fell out underneath them. And either the show got canceled or something else happened. And now here they were, 50 years old, not likely to get that chance again. And I, it just, it just happened to me like five different times in one year that I came onto a show and there they would be, and that would be the story. And I, it breaks my heart to think of having that taste and then having, being deprived of it and having to come to terms with that. I was lucky. I, that never happened to me, and by the time the various backlashes that have occurred over the years happened, I had so much work done that I, I, I didn't fall prey to it. I just kept working. There are a couple of us like that. Uh, Bethany Rooney, um, obviously, Leslie Linker Gladder, but... Uh, um, there's like five or six of us that started r roughly during the same period of time and managed to weather those waves. Uh, in my case, I, had a, I got booked by Rod Holcomb. And uh, it was a brand new show. Um, I also, when I looked at that pilot, I was like, oh, oh my God, how am I going to do this? Because L.A. Law was... Uh, Big and stodgy, kind of. I mean, it took forever. It took forever to light it. It took forever to work out the camera moves. It took forever. And he, now I'm going to go on to this show that uses the Steadicam for 50 to 60% of the show. Um, and they lit the set so that it was basically lit. Uh, you know, you turned on a bunch of stuff and the whole thing was ready. So um, I get hired to do this show. I've never done it. Uh, it. It had 10 minute Steadicam shots. And I would lay that whole thing out. And in LA law parlance, I have two hours to go think about something while they set that up. I would lay the whole thing out, I'd turn around, I'd sit in my chair, I'd take a glass of water, and Richard Thorpe, the DP, would go, ready! And I was like, what? <laughs> it, it was astonishingly different. Um, it was, uh, as I say, I shot the fourth episode and the 17th episode uh, of the first year. So. They didn't know what they had in the first episode at all. Everybody was on pins and needles. All the actors were insecure. They all thought uh, um, Chicago Hope was going to be the one. Um, they didn't know. By the time I get back, 
on the 17th episode, they are a phenomenal mega hit. Their pictures are on every cover of every magazine in the supermarket. Now they're this big thing. They're full of themselves. They're getting <laughs> called down to the lawyers at Warner Brothers to be cautioned about sexual harassment. It's like a whole other animal. And it just went from there.